When learning about runway markings, the FAA and other sources will give you the dry information about what each bit of paint means, but let's have a look at the runway in a real world scenario and how we can use some of the markings in an actual landing. At Flight Insight, we stress real world scenarios in our training. So if you like this style, check out Private Pilot Ground School and our other trainings at the link in the description today. We're on short final to runway 27 left in Melbourne, Florida. The first thing we should notice as we're coming in is the PAPI lights. PAPI is short for Precision Approach Path Indicator. They tell you if you're high or low on the glide slope. This one has four lights, and when you see two whites and two reds, it means you're on the glide slope, as we are here. An important thing to realize is where these lights are directing you towards on the runway. The lights are always set up to bring you to the point on the runway a beam where they're located. On this and most large runways, this is the beginning of the two wide white stripes on either side of center. This is known as the aiming point of the runway. It's important to realize that this is not the beginning of the runway, it's further down the runway. On large runways like this, the aiming point is typically a thousand feet down the runway, so they're sometimes called the thousand foot markers. On other runways, the PAPI lights can be located in other places. On smaller runways that don't have precision instrument approaches, the PAPIs could be set up to bring you closer to the runway threshold or somewhere else, but they'll always take you right to the beam point of where they're placed. Take this into consideration when making a landing on a shorter runway. You may want to touch down sooner than the point where you find the pappies. On very short final, we see a few distinct areas at the beginning of the runway. First is an area with yellow chevrons and a yellow bar at the far end. This is the stopway. It's used to give room to aircraft moving the opposite way, in other words, when landing or departing on runway 9 right on the other end, to get stopped in an emergency or other incident without going into the grass. It's not designed for normal operations, so no taxi, takeoff, or landing can be made on the stopway. Beyond the stopway is a less scary looking area with white arrows. This is the displaced threshold. It allows for takeoff and taxi, but not landing. We need to land beyond the displaced threshold, and it's usually there for obstruction clearance or noise abatement reasons. At the far end of the displaced threshold is a white bar, which is the threshold itself. This is the beginning of the runway. We can touch our wheels down here and any place on the runway after here. Though again, on longer runways like this, we're typically aiming to where the pappies are bringing us, the aiming point a thousand feet down the runway. Still, in Part 91 Ops or in the absence of some restriction from our company or flight school or something, or your own personal minimums, there's nothing stopping you from putting your wheels down right on the threshold if you can. And that's the thing, because the aiming point is not the same as the touchdown point, as we'll see. As we approach the threshold, we see the threshold markings, sometimes called the piano keys. On larger runways like this, they denote the width of the runway. AIM 2-3 has a helpful chart on other widths if you're interested. Now, our aiming point again is those two wide white bars. They're a beam the pappy lights. The touchdown zone is denoted by thinner bars, one before the aiming point and others after it. After the aiming point, they begin with two bars and taper down to one as you get closer to the end of the touchdown zone. Notice as we come into land that if we didn't change our approach at all, our butts would smack down right on the aiming point. That doesn't end up being the case though. We close the throttle and begin bleeding off speed in the round out. This carries us beyond the aiming point and our wheels actually touch down just about a beam the first double white bars marking the touchdown zone. This is important to realize when trying to make precision landings like on your check rides, your aiming point and touchdown zones are different and this is borne out on the runway markings. So we haven't looked exhaustively at all runway markings, but the real world scenario hopefully gives you a bit of insight on why things are laid out as they are. Looking for more insights? Check out Flight Insight today.